So we do have some documentation. This looks like some tips page. Probably pretty important here is to check your voltage on the back of the printer and we'll get to that. A big old thank you card from GTEC. That's actually kind of like a card. And the user manual itself. So this is a really nice manual, glossy thick pages and very nicely laid out with pictures that are colored. So yeah, very nice. I love to see this kind of attention to detail, even in the manual. All right, so we got a top layer here and everything is encased in this soft black foam. So here we have a bag of accessories and parts to the printer and we'll go through this in a second, guys. We also get a little mouse pad, I guess, to use by your computer if you wanted to. We got our power cable in here and this one is the US type. Part of our spool holder, pre-mounted hardware. Pretty cool looking design there. And that's the very top layer. Lots of good thick foam. All right, so in the next layer we can see this is our gantry, which is the upper portion of the printer. Everything does look like it's pretty much pre-built and ready to go. So yeah, let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Okay, so it is tethered to the bottom or the base, so I can't really move it around too much. But yeah, we can see we got nice flat channels here. What's interesting is we do have some actual 3D printing parts, which is kind of rare these days, but kind of nice to see. But yeah, we'll look at this in a little more detail later on. But one thing I definitely want to mention, there is a dual Z-axis lead screws. Now, the only thing that maybe is not so great is that they are not tethered between each other. Normally, I like printers that are tethered because, you know, you can easily move one and then the other one moves. But here you can see that, you know, that's not what's going on. So I think that's it for this layer. And here you guys can see the bottom layer, which is where our base is. And yeah, everything seems to be packed very well. So again, these two are tethered together, so we're going to have to kind of keep them together. And pull it out of the foam here. All right, and this is what our base looks like. It's pretty small in the depth or smaller than normal, but kind of wide also. So it's kind of like a square. But let's go ahead and flip it around. And here we can see the bottom of the printer. We got really large rubber squishy feet. Some venting here, cutouts here where we're gonna have access to connect the upper portion. So I do wanna pop this lid off so you guys can see what's underneath. But before that, let's go ahead and see what's in this bag. So we get the other part of the spool holder, which will connect to this piece here. A pretty cheap spatula that's not sharpened, so pretty useless, and I don't think you'd wanna use it on this kind of printer anyway. We get some open-ended wrenches and Allen wrenches and some tweezers. A little coil of test filament, not too crazy about these. Honestly, they're kinda small and hard to deal with, but maybe good for the first little test print. We get a USB cable that connects from the printer to the computer. Some bolt knobs here that are probably for assembly. A pack of zip ties. Our larger 5x35 bolts, and this is going to be what holds the gantry to the base. So here we get some extra parts like the PTFE tubing, a couple extra nozzles, looks like 0.4 size, and also an end stop switch. And it is in a 3D printed case. And the last part here, we get the micro SD card with the USB adapter, and also a a little tiny Teflon tube. All right, so I'm gonna clean some of this stuff up here and grab the wrenches and we'll open up this back cover. So it looks like we have eight bolts here to take out, including the ones with the rubber feet here. So I believe that's our last bolt. And let's see if this lid comes off. And sure enough, it does. We do have a fan connected to it. All right, jumping to another camera. Let's take a closer look here. So first thing that jumps out to me is this really thin power supply and that's the branding on it there. It is 350 watts, 24 volt. And the voltage selection here is on the other side, which you definitely want to check before you power on the printer. This is the Y motor here, and you guys can see that the motors are GTEC branded. So this is our main plug where the power comes in. It goes into the power supply, and then out of the power supply to the main board. And this is what the board looks like. It's quite interesting. We got an ARM processor chip there, 32-bit. Our stepper drivers there are not removable and also not heat synced, which I guess don't really need to be on this printer. We got a couple heat sinks here. All our end stop switches here, the wiring, and on the other side, our USB port and the micro SD card slot. And also there is a fan that blows right on top of it. From the main board, we got a ribbon cable here that goes to the touchscreen display. So the base is completely metal, but we do have some strengtheners here or the channels that bolt on to the upper portion. So yeah, overall very nicely organized and constructed. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. We'll flip it around and start putting it together. All right, so everything's back. Let's go ahead and flip it around. So for our next part, we're gonna need these bolts. I think we only need four, but there are six of them. Let's see what the instructions say. So from part one, they kind of start with giving you tips about the printer and what the best way to use it is. And then we got our parts list there. 
And for step three, they want us to go ahead and check the rollers on the bed and the hot end, which I usually do that later on. Okay, so that's not really assembly, is it? Okay, here we go. Assembling the machine, that's what we need. So I find it that doing all the adjustments is, you know, probably better after you assemble it. So yeah, for the first part, we're just gonna grab the upper portion and connect it to the base with the M535 bolts. And there are four of them that go through the bottom. So yeah, guys, this part is pretty simple. We're just gonna set it here and you can kind of see the cutout where it'll kind of line up. So probably the most important part is make sure that your wire is not tangled and you know if you have to twist it around but yeah it's just simply gonna sit in there and watch out for wires here and there just like that and it kind of holds itself we can just raise up a side and then start our bolts through the bottom this one's definitely a little bit more tricky as you do have to find the hole but it's not too bad guys grab the other bolt and also start it so we're not gonna tighten these up yet. We're just gonna get where they just start to snug up and then we're gonna leave it loose because we need to tighten the other side first. All right, so that should be good there. And now let's flip it around. And I went ahead and brought you guys down so maybe you can see a little better, but yeah, this is pretty simple process here. Now you can use something like a filament spool to kind of prop it up so you don't have to hold it. Let's see, is that even gonna work? Okay, yeah. But yeah, this makes it, you know, where you don't have to hold it and you can kind of just work on putting the bolt in. Or you can even just slide it off the edge of the table and do that, so. And actually, another way, you can just set the whole printer on its side and work on it from the sides. So. All right, so we started the bolts up and I don't like to tighten them yet because, let's flip it here to the back. The reason is I wanna bring the whole X axis down here. And the reason for that is because we want these to kinda, you know, go a little in or a little out depending on where this wants to be. So let's go ahead and bring it down. So because this is not tethered, like we talked about earlier, we have to spin them both at the same time. But most of the time, this is not an issue, obviously. And you guys can see once I got lower here, they kinda go together anyway, so. So yeah, we'll go pretty much almost down here. And now we know that the spacing between here and here is as good as it'll get or pretty darn close. And we can kind of check the rollers and make sure, you know, everything is pretty good, which it is actually. So now we can confidently tighten the bolts up on the bottom and it'll have just the right distance between the two. So yeah, all we gotta do now is snug them up. And unfortunately the shorter end of the wrench doesn't go in there. So, you know, you don't have much leverage here. So maybe using the extra bolts here, I can make leverage and tighten it up really good. So yeah, this is a pretty cool trick here that you can add extension to the wrench. All right, now let's do the other side. And there we go. We are nice and tight and hopefully exactly where we need to be. All right, so for the next part, step three, it looks like we have to install the Y-axis in-stop switch, and that was the extra switch I thought was the extra, but this is the Y-axis. So if we flip our printer around, looking at the back, we can see, maybe you guys can see, there's two little threads here on top and a plug. So let's go ahead and take this out of the bag, and this is what it looks like. It's actually 3D printed, and if we, let's see, take off this cover, you guys can kind of see the and stop switch itself. It is one of those optical kind or sensing kind and yeah, the case is just 3D printed, which is quite interesting because I haven't seen this in a while. Pretty cool. So yeah, we just need the right wrench here and with the plug facing towards the back, we're gonna tighten it up right here. So you don't wanna over tighten this as you know, this is a 3D printed part. And yeah, that should be good right there. And I think we can go ahead and plug this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that is the Y-axis end stop switch. So for step four, we're gonna put the spool holder together. And so the way this goes together is, this is gonna be the front here, which is our nicer part. And then the plastic spool part, the holder, is gonna go towards the back like that. And then the locking nut towards the front and just twist it and it locks. Yeah, simple as that. So looking at the top of the printer, we're at the back, let's go ahead and flip it around. If you're looking towards the front, on the left side, this is where our extruder is and where the filament will feed. So the spool holder needs to naturally go like this. So the spool goes to the back, uh, just like this on the rail. There are T-nuts on the bottom that are going to line up with the channel and then fall in. The way they work is actually not too hard, that they do fall into the channel. And what you want to do, and you guys probably can't see that at all, but you want to unscrew it so the T-knot can drop down and then once you tighten it back up, it's going to turn in the channel and lock in. So the T-knot literally sits like this and then it turns and locks in. So if it's not locking, unscrew it and then screw it back in. You do kind of have to make sure that you're lined up centered with the groove. So just unscrew it and then screw it back in. It should turn and lock in. 
and you can kind of peek through the sides to see you know if it actually turned and that's the way the spool holder goes on and the way I like to do it guys is go as far that way as you can because if you go more towards the middle it does look maybe a bit nicer but then you're gonna have your filament more of an angle because it does go from here to there so the farther out it is the better so for the next part which is step six is we're just gonna simply insert this PTFE tubing into the other end here into the extruder so there is a little blue clip that clips into the coupler there so we got to take that out and then just simply insert the tubing so you want to make sure it goes in there and then we're gonna put the clip back in so it can expand the coupler to hold the PTFE tubing in so simple as that we should be good to go and just realized you guys probably didn't see any of that but yeah it simply just goes in here so a little clip all right I think we're pretty close to being finished here we just need to plug a few things in so we'll flip around here you can see the z-axis motor needs to be plugged in on this side and we did install our y-axis end stop switch there our other z-axis motor needs to be plugged in then flip around to the other side here on the front our z-axis and stop switch needs to be plugged in there we go and if we keep flipping around to the other side we can see we actually have two z-axis and stop switches and this one also needs to be plugged in and i believe that is all of the plugging in so seeing that it has two switches for the z-axis makes me feel a little more better about its accuracy all right so for the next part i think what we need to do is we need to adjust the rollers on the bed and the x-axis and also these rollers here if they need to be adjusted which on mine they're actually pretty good yeah for mine i don't even need to adjust these so yeah depending if you do the adjusting eccentric nuts are on the inside and you will need a wrench that came with the printer to adjust them so we'll start with the bed um there is some foam here that i haven't pulled out yet kind of keeps it from moving around but yeah the way it works is that we have channel here and there's two rollers on each side that will roll around it and so what we want is we want the rollers to be tight enough where the bed is not moving but not too tight where it eats up the roller over time so that's quite important you want to make it as loose as possible where the bed doesn't move around so if we go to the side here actually this is just the upper portion here okay yeah so yeah this is the build plate and it's individually wrapped but we'll take a closer look here in a second let's go ahead and adjust these rollers so the two adjustable ones are on this side. I'm go ahead and prop this thing up, will be easier. So the whole idea here, guys, is that you want them to spin pretty easily. So you can just grab your finger and spin it in one spot, kind of like a little burnout. If you can do that, and it's not too tough to spin, and the bed doesn't wobble, you got yourself a perfect adjustment. So it looks like I'm not gonna have to do anything there, but if you did have to do it, you would just turn the eccentric nut one way or another to get the wheel closer or farther away from the channel. So hopefully that made sense. Now we do have another issue, which our belt here is way too loose. It's just not tight enough at all. So we do need to tighten that. And it looks like the adjustment for that is right here in the front. So we're simply just gonna turn this clockwise to tighten it and it tightens up. And so on the belt, you also want them looser than tighter, if that makes any sense. You don't wanna play any kind of notes on it. So if you hear even anything closer to a note, you're too tight. So I think I'm pretty good right there. Maybe I'll loosen it up just a bit. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So again, no note playing and looser is better than tighter. All right, so yeah, our Y axis here is good. Our rollers are good on the bed and our belt is nice and tight and seems to be running even on the pulleys. So let's go up to our X axis, which is our hot end here. And we're gonna flip the printer around and we actually need to bring it up a bit. So here we have the same situation. We have two stationaries on top and an adjustable on the bottom. So for this one, I can already feel that it's too tight. And even though I can spin the wheels, they're very tough to spin. When I move it back and forth, I can kind of feel there's some jumping and jittering in the movement. So what we're gonna do is grab our wrench and we're gonna try to loosen it here, whichever way that is. Okay, there we go. So we've loosened it quite a bit. So you can kind of feel by the wheels. You just want decent friction. Now, if you go too loose, it'll start wobbling like it is now. So I just need to tighten it just a little bit after that. And there we go. That should be good right there. The wheels spin pretty freely. It's not wobbling and it has a very smooth motion. So yeah, guys, not complicated at all. You just got to, you know, adjust it correctly and you're going to have nice smooth travel. Now, speaking of smooth travel, we can also adjust our x-axis belt right here on the other end if you're looking at the front on the right we also have a bolt here that tightens and loosens and our belt here is way too tight i want to loosen that up a bit move this back and forth make sure the belt is happy on the pulleys and everything seems good check it again perfect and i think we are good right there that's pretty much how it goes and on these 
rollers here, you have these are stationaries and then the inside one's adjustable. So this is not as important. If it's close, you know, if they're not completely perfect, it's not that big of a deal because the Z axis doesn't, you know, move a lot and fast. It just slowly moves up. So as long as there's nothing too out of place, you should be fine. Now, if you're binding and, you know, really too tight or just completely loose and not grabbing anywhere, you know, you want to adjust it then. But if it's pretty close, I wouldn't mess with it because it's not as critical and also sometimes you can't get them perfect like you would want them. All right, so we're pretty much done assembling this thing and adjusting it. Let's take this bill plate out of the bag. And I really like this finish. It's like a matte blue material. It does feel pretty nice and got a little GTEC logo here. So it's like a metal sheet that's flexible. I really like these. When they do work, they're awesome. And on the bed here, we have a magnetic sheet that this magnetizes to. So it's quite easy to line it up and it's quite strong when it does hold so it's not going to move for sure.